following interview was, con was conducted with Professor Thomas F. Hall, Professor Emeritus of Supervision, College of Technology, Purdue University, for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, March 25th, 2009, at his residence in West Lafayette. Part two. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're going to you. talk a little bit about some of your travels and things of that sort and your consulting experience overseas. So let's start with Iran. All right, fine. Thank you. Uh, 19. 71 and 1972, I spent a year and a summer in Iran, and uh, I took a leave of absence from Purdue and became a temporary employee with a Harza Engineering Company in Chicago who had a contract in Iran with the Ministry of Power and Water. So that's really how I got over I was there. going to ask you how the invitation came. Yeah. And uh, the job, fortunately, took me all over Iran. I saw the entire country, and it was just a fascinating experience. I conducted supervisory training sessions. I, I had meetings with various managers and supervisors, and I met with faculty members at the University of Tehran. What was Iran like? And this, what year was this again? So In seventy over okay. seventy one, seventy five. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, uh, uh, late seventy one, early seventy two. The Shah was still in power at that time. Oh, yes, oh, yes. In, in fact, we Nixon was president, and, mm -hmm. and my wife and I stood on the street with a mob and watched the Shah and, and Nixon go by in their convertible waving at the crowds, you know, and I don't recall either one of us waved, but at least... You saw them go by. Yeah, at least we can say we were there. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, my wife and Karen were, were with me uh, all except for the last summer. And we lived in a multinational apartment in Tehran. And we lived with the Iranians. So we weren't, in fact, anywhere near the American compound, which was at the north end of Tehran, which is primarily military. And uh, we never even saw it, really. But uh, we were kind of glad that if you're in Rome, do what the Romans do, right. you know. And we kind of enjoyed that experience. Was the language did you speak in, was it English? Did no, the no, they had the Farsi as their language. Sure. And the strange thing, I really, I really wanted to learn some Farsi. And the people I dealt with said, please, we want to learn English because they wanted me to always speak English because at that time, knowledge and fluency in English was, was an upward mobility thing. You could get better jobs, more money, this sort of thing. So I learned just enough Farsi to get around. It was sort of on a side, I guess, but it's interesting. We, we had to take, or I had to take a lot, both my wife and I had, took taxis around in town. Did you have a car there? Oh, no, heavens, no. I, I wouldn't be alive if I had a car there. I think, but the, uh, well, anyway, the uh, I had my counterpart. I had cards of where I wanted to go, and offices and buildings and the bazaar and so on. And I had him. I put on English where I wanted to, go, and I said, "Now turn it over and write in Farsi so that the cab driver." And the humorous, I guess, thing was almost every time I would hand this to the taxi driver and he would stare at it and then he'd stop a policeman or another ta taxi driver and he'd show him the card none of them none of them could read and write <laughs> so that was the end of that it's sort of an interesting culture they and they didn't turn it over they couldn't even if they did they couldn't read farsi because they couldn't read or write yeah they they couldn't read it was i handed them the farsi side but okay. mo there were, and very few of, of the people in that Mm -hmm. There was a big class difference, and uh, well, nice people, but they, well, never mind. Well, tell us, what, what was the everyday life? What was it like uh, over there? Uh, did you get to meet any people, and did someone go with you when you did all, traveling all over the country? Oh, uh, yes, we had, uh, uh, there was a, a, a driver that was, well, not exactly assigned to me, but I got him most of the time. That was um, he's an Iranian, but he was a driver, and and he had a jeep, and he'd take me around to these various places, and uh, it's kind of interesting. And one one of the one of the nice things I thought was that uh, we were going around up in the mountains in the north, and all of a sudden he stopped. He jumps out of the jeep, 
gets his prayer rug out and kneels on his prayer rug and does his Muslim thing and rolls up the prayer rug and got by you and off we went. Now that's kind of neat. That uh, yeah. It's a little different than, I don't know, I don't think I'll go to church this Sunday. <laughs> right. I already did my duty, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> on the road. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's... Uh, was your daughter a school age? Uh, yeah, Karen was, was with us and, and she... Uh, uh, was took the whole eighth grade over in Tehran at the American school, so she she did the eighth grade there. Okay, was that far from where you were living? And it was it was uh, no, it wasn't. It was up toward the American compound. Did you did someone take her there? Yes, yeah. There was a sort of a school bus, I guess you'd say sure. that uh, would take her. Bring her yeah, home went then. around and picked kids up, and it was mostly military kids because that's it was up at that end, but. But if you were an American citizen, you, your child could go to the school. And they, how did she like? How did she adjust to it? Uh, she found it incredibly easy. Uh, she uh, there was a kind of a social thing. I, I, I hesitate to even mention this, but it's true. Uh, most of the of the eighth grade kids that were with her were living in a compound and were primarily military sons and daughters. And they had access, of course, to all of the uh, commissary. They had a skippy peanut butter, wonder commissary. bread, commissary. And, of course, Karen and all of us were just living off the land with the Iranians. And so Karen had Iranian bread and so on with Iranian meat and, uh, you know. Sure. And these kids made life miserable for her. She would come mm. home and talk about it and cry because they just, you know, look at that, look what she's eating, and, you know, this kind of thing. And, uh, and uh, well, it, yeah, she survived. Yeah, yeah, you, she do. Survived. you do. Kids can surround that. Uh, I want to, I want to, the, Ameri- the, oh, the American must start awfully young, you know. <laughs> uh, well... It was an ex- interesting experience. Oh, yeah. Did oh. you, w- the time that you were over there, did you have a vacation? Did you come back at all, or did you stay there the whole time? No, we, we stayed the whole time, but we took vacations. We took one in Switzerland, and uh, which has got to be the most clean, organized country in the world. No beer cans in the gutter, I mean. <laughs> and then we, we went several times to, to Lebanon, which we just loved Lebanon. It had a Lebanese tourist class hotel right on the Mediterranean and a, a beautiful city now of course it's rubble this is we just almost and Beirut wept. was a very well known and very uh, cosmopolitan yes city. indeed it was it just a nice city it was mm-hmm. well things change right our, our daughter Anne came over on a uh, how old was your daughter the other daughter then was she older oh uh, yeah she she was just finished West Lafayette High and was going to enter art and design at, at Purdue and she was in between so she came over and uh, her art and design advisor or professor or somebody gave her a project for which she got some credit that if she would take pictures of Iranian architecture and Iranian art and make up a little blurb about it you know that he he would give her credit for this which she did and thoroughly enjoyed it and Gave her a chance to observe and, and look and, at these and, and, and <clears throat> learn give her something to do when she was over there, and, and it mm-hmm. was it was really a nice thing for her. Mm-hmm. And I don't know whatever happened to that project, but uh, <laughs> you may still have it. <laughs> <laughs> and there were enormous, enormous social and cultural differences between the United States and Iran, uh, and we were eased on the cultural shock. We became, when we knew we were going. We became friends with an Iranian student here at Purdue who was getting his doctor's degree in electrical engineering. Wonderful, nice guy. And so he was over at our home a lot, and we had a long talks with him. Here before here, we Yes, went. and before we left. And, uh, you know, he would tell us what to watch for and what not to say and what to say and what to do and not to do. And all. It just really helpful to us, and it really was. Oh, and, uh, we'd, it saved us stumbling into some really cultural problems that could have been pretty bad for sure. us but uh, it worked out fine uh, I was uh, just to get a little tie with Purdue I was primarily responsible for an Iranian young lady coming over to the Department of Supervision to get her, her master's degree and she was a very bright 
young lady, good English, and so on. And uh, uh, well, anyway, I, she did come. Yeah, she, and she enjoyed her stay. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, the manager of the group that I worked with at the Ministry of Water and Power, he came over to Purdue several times and uh, for short visits and. Uh, primarily in the School of Technology, and, and he, he liked it. Of course, Purdue was known in certain circles in Iran, as they are all over the world, primarily for engineering, but uh, there was no shock, you know, to come here, and he met with some Iranian students and so on. Mm -hmm. so. And it worked out. Oh, yeah, it worked. Yeah. But it, 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 was, it was a very, very interesting experience. Yeah, I uh, think so. I, right. I, 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 we're both glad that we, my wife and I, are, and daughter are glad that we went. I don't want to go back. It's, it's not the same. Anyway. It's not the same at all. Ever since the 79, the prisoner thing, you know. Yeah, that, that's right. It, uh, that was kind of the tipping point, and then the Shah left and everything went Yeah, when they took way. over the embassy, it... Uh, uh, was the embassy uh, far from where you were located? Uh, it was a long walk oh. from our apartment, okay. but we could do it. I mean, sure. we've both taken, you know, strolls and we'd go by there. It was, it was as you saw in the news, it was a brick wall, so it was really, you couldn't see the embassy. Sure. But you knew the site where it was located. Oh, yeah, we right. walked big, you know, sign American embassy. Sure. And, uh, that was a, well... Nice experience. Yeah, right. thanks. <laughs> Good. Then in 1978, we took a sabbatical, or I took a sabbatical in Ireland and uh, worked with the Industrial Training Authority, which had their office in Dublin, and they were a, a, a part of the Ministry of Labor. Uh, they had vocational and technical schools throughout Ireland. And the very right, North and South Ireland? No, no, oh, no, 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 just South. Oh. Uh, we're coming to North after a while. And oh, okay, South. Never, never the twain ne shall meet. The Republican. Meet. Okay, That's gotcha. right, uh, the Republican uh, mm -hmm. versus Ulster, you know. So uh, they were strictly, strictly in, in Ireland, Southern, the Republic thereof. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I was really fortunate. I got to travel because of my job all over Ireland, and it was just fascinating. It, uh, and... Uh, Whereabouts were you situated? Situ were you living in Dublin? Yeah, we, oh. no, well, we lived in Booterstown, which is a, a suburb of Dublin. Okay, <clears> and uh, we commuted. I commuted on by one of these great big bombardier buses. In England are red, in Ireland are green, double deckers. You know, they're yeah. kind of fun. I remember the first time I was on one. They're really nice. You have to get upstairs. Yeah, <laughs> well, everybody ought to say they did it. <laughs> Absolutely. It, it, it was fun. Yeah. And, uh, you don't experience that very often. <laughs> that's right. But they had a good system. And we, when we'd go around Ireland or Dublin for various things, shopping and stuff, and visiting, sewing, so we'd we'd take these buses. A very good system, and uh, we enjoyed it all. Mm -hmm. uh, did you? Excuse me. Did you have a house there? No, we we lived in an apartment. Okay. In Booterstown, apartment building, mm -hmm. and uh, just nice people. Uh, felt at home. It was just, just delightful, the whole thing. Sure. Um, Anne came over and visited us. Our daughter Anne, the older daughter, came over and visited us on a Purdue break. And, uh, came over for a while it was on the, during the Purdue break. And, uh, well, she liked it as much as we did. So. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice country. Yeah, she, she didn't want to leave, and we didn't want to leave. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I, I arranged for one of the uh, uh, faculty at the at the uh, uh, industrial training authority to come over, spend a semester in the department with us. So uh, he enjoyed that, and uh, uh, it was. This is kind of interesting that uh, after you had been there. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, I got him an apartment over in Beaujardine, and, and he, of course, would go to the I took him to the supermarket, so he knew where it was. And, I, and he said, you know, he said, it was, it's, you Americans are very strange. He said, I went into the supermarket to get milk. He said, I went up, and here is a long aisle of milk, chocolate milk, 1%, 2%, buttermilk. Milk, just count it. He said, in Ireland, I go to the corner stop and I get milk. <laughs> As it's milk. Milk. Like we used to get, vitamin D, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's it. it was, he was a neat guy. And, yeah. uh, 
they were just, I, I, I'm repeating, I know, but it, it, they were delightful people in a delightful country. And, uh, I'm, I'm told that now that uh, since they've come into the European common um, our community that, uh, that it's from what we knew has changed dramatically, that uh, there's a much faster growing middle class uh, infrastructure has bloomed. Yeah. And just, uh, uh, it, it's just different. I don't know if it's better or worse, but the people that have gone there recently have said, don't go back, that it's not the Ireland we went to. So, Well, anyway, in 1978 and 79, uh, I went to England twice, just for a few weeks each time. And I was dealing with the polytechnics, which are vocational technical schools that are all over England. And I held group and individual meetings with faculty and students at various ones of these polytechnics. The first time, I went to the Northeast London Polytechnic, which is on the East End, which is uh, was right in the, in, the, in the heart of Cockney country, which was kind of interesting, uh, down by the docks, uh, within the sound of bow bells, you know. Yeah, that's the kind of different tough. district. It's, it's a different district. <laughs> there you go. It's uh, thank you, and uh, we we took. Uh, we lived in a in a school owned apartment that was you know nice and uh, it was in the east end and we took the tube all over london we just the underground's a marvelous way to get around and uh, very simple and just we we rode the tube a lot uh, my second time over there was in danbury park in in essex and i went by myself this time and uh, Danbury Park was really a large old country manor with an estate and this happened to be the uh, uh, headquarters for the, the uh, polytechnic, polytechnics that were in that area in Essex and it was really a nice place. They, they, they kept telling me, uh, I had a nice room there and all, and they kept telling me to beware of the ghost. Of course all English manors have a ghost and uh, I was at a room at the foot of the stairs, and they said, well, the ghost goes up and down the stairs, and of course at night. And I never really got up and looked out, but I didn't hear or see anything, so I... Didn't knock on your door. I, no, I, I, I think, sometimes I think, well, never mind. <laughs> Let me interrupt you. For the researchers, a polytechnic institute, could you just make a comment? What what level would that be post a high school or uh, yeah okay. yeah it was it was I'm thinking for the researcher might what, what it was, level is it? it was it was post high school and I'm not sure maybe they would even dip down into somebody that left high school what would be the length would it be two years or four years well this varied on a program they okay. had it okay. it could uh, and there were some that uh, it was some of the typical ones you know at that time drafts but now it's all computerized but uh, uh, trades and crafts and okay. plumbers and this kind of thing and. Uh, uh, in northeast London, of course, a lot of it was was oriented with the docks, sure. okay. that, uh, uh, maintenance on barges, this kind of thing. And, uh, Would they get a certificate then, or yeah. okay, rather than a degree, more of a certification yeah. type yeah, thing? Yeah, that you you're now qualified to go to work at whatever it was sure. you learned, okay. and could hold this up to an employer, and and supposedly, of course, in England, they'd say, "Oh, you went to something sure. polytechnic." And, yeah, okay. And it was, I talked to several of the students, and they were really enthused about this. They liked what they were doing. They apparently, I didn't, they apparently had a pretty good uh, placement, you know, what you want to do and what you're qualified was for. Was qualified in with the industries and companies that would be yeah, looking for those yeah. kind of, for hiring. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, you know, some of it was pretty sophisticated in electronics and sure. all, but, uh, oh, yeah. but it, it was a really good thing. And, uh, and they're clo and they'd be close to home, like say Ivy Tech, uh, oh, the yeah. regional campus oh, yeah. is close oh, yeah, to yeah. home. They, I suppose, lived at home, sure, and, right, or commuted a short distance. Right. But uh, again, that this this whole thing, all of the experiences I had, uh, wherever I went, were pretty much related to the, the 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 school now, the College of Technology, and that it was more doing, practical, hands-on right. kind of thing, and okay. which. Uh, I've always been very proud of. It's never bothered me at all. That, right. uh, I like to jump in and get my hands wet. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I never thought dirty hands were a bad thing, <laughs> particularly if I want my <clears throat> refrigerator repaired. You know, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> uh, 
Well, anyway, to wind this up, in 1981, I spent a few days in Northern Ireland, in Belfast. Uh, with I went with Jim Wendell, who is still on the uh, OLS faculty at Purdue, and uh, we went to the DeLorean Automotive Assembly Plant. How did that invitation come about? Uh, through Jim. Jim okay. was doing consulting work with them, and uh, he subcontracted me, I guess is what you might say. Because we're very good friends anyway, always have been. But uh, uh, I was sort of a hanger-on. and uh, uh, We attended a lot of meetings and met with a lot of individual man- managers. Uh, That's where DeLorean was building the cars. I yeah, think. yeah, that they, they were assembling the cars there, which, of course, as everybody knows, died on the vine. But uh, I still think that man may have been a genius. I'm not sure, but uh, at least a manufacturer. Well, anyhow. Uh, it was colorful. Yeah, oh boy, yes he was. Uh, he he didn't fit GM's he, mold at all. He was with GM. As oh, you yeah, he was right? the head of the Pontiac division. Right. He was the head of the Pontiac division. One of my favorite division. boys, but things took another turn. And he and he's. He's um, was he there at the time oh, that well, you were there? I, if he was, we didn't know. Oh, it. okay, he, you didn't get a chance to see him. No, then. I okay. I I don't know where he was, but uh, we okay. didn't see him. Sure, if he was there. What was the size of the plant? Was that the only place where they were building? Was only in Ireland? I believe it was the only assembly plant, at least in Northern Ireland. Now, okay. I, I think I think DeLorean's scheme. He may have went someplace else, but he was trying to be a social oriented too and go where there was unemployment sure. and this kind of thing. And uh, and I I really frankly don't know where else he had assembly. Was it a plant. large size plant? Would you say? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. A lot yeah. of a lot of employees there. Well, I wouldn't have any idea. Yeah, but it was good. If the infrastructure was large, they probably had a good sized staff. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Sure, yeah, people, it, workers there. I doubt if it was as large as one of the big assembly sure. plants here, but they only made one car. Yeah, right. But it was and it was, it was and from very modern, all the latest stuff. So it was interesting. Uh, they had very very tight security in 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 Belfast. Uh, it was kind of scary just going around. Uh, if you went in, well, when you went into the plant, as an example, you went through a, a tunnel that just had armed soldiers and police in there. I mean, a, a tunnel, a uh, real tunnel. Well, it was on on up a ground. It was like going through a tube, and you went in this end, and you came out the other end, and you were searched, and uh, it was really. And all this time, people are pointing their guns at you, and I kept thinking, would you point that someplace else? You know. But they were very sensitive to to the troubles and uh, a lot of graffiti all over. And uh, some of the streets we only saw one, but one of one of the was barricaded, you know. So division between yeah, that's right. Barbed wire and uh, well, anyway, uh, Ulster, Northern Ireland was very different from the Republic of Ireland. Uh, you were in a different country. Uh, it was it was a faster pace. It was much more English, even American. Where well, it's English based. It's English based, and and uh, where Southern Ireland was kind of relaxed. And let's not get too excited about this. And can, can I buy you a pint? You know, kind of thing. and and Northern Ireland was very English, although they were in the minority. It was very Protestant, although they were in the minority, and there just seemed to be. Tension in, in, in the Republic of Ireland, you were just totally relaxed. You, you... Was the troubles in pl- and going on at that time? The troubles. The troubles were. They, oh yeah, uh, yeah. But Prim- not as maybe not as hectic as it got later. Primarily, uh, primarily uh, between uh, Derry or London Derry, depending on whether oh. you're from the north or south. Uh, there was almost a. I don't. I don't understand it, and I didn't try to get involved, but. They seem to be the two hubs that were, and I guess even the IRA types from from the Republic would, I guess, would go up. I, I heard this. I don't know this as a fact. Would sort of go up to Derry, London Derry, and then make their raids and all this kind of okay. thing. And, and they, in the in the Republic of Ireland, our friends would sort of tell us. That, that there are people that probably you know that are really in the IRA, but you won't know this. And the only thing that one day at work, 
fellow that had worked near where I did in, the, in this big, in old, Northern Ireland? big bullpen. No, this was in the Republic. Mm-hmm. This guy was really beat up. And, uh, you know, I didn't say anything, and they were nobody else said anything. And one of my pretty good friends said, uh, he may have gone north. And, you know, gee, it, it wasn't funny. No, no, it's pretty serious stuff. And supposedly they now have a truce but yeah. for 10 years. But well, when I, you went to the dorm, did you stay in uh, up there? Oh, yeah, yeah, we just stayed in a hotel in, okay. in, in, in Belfast. How long were you there? Oh, I think about four days. We saw the in and out, which was enough. Yeah. Uh, I, I, that, so there were separatists. One was for, went to the Republic, and then another time you went to Northern Ireland. Yeah, right, okay, two, 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 two different times altogether. Right, uh-huh. And uh, I would go back to the Republic... But I don't want to go back to the Ulster. Uh, yeah. Or you were in in, um, in Belfast. Was that yes. when you were in London area? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, we were in in Belfast the whole time. Right. And as you look back on this, uh, what uh, do you take away from it? Was it a good experience to be oh, able my. to do this consulting? Did you do any other? Were there any other places that you visited, or just these? Oh well, well no. And well, we we took uh, you know vacations sure. around, but uh, we went to Scotland, this kind of thing. But I mean not. From a business right, Purdue point of view, this there wasn't any other place, and, and uh, well, I guess that's about and, it. Yeah, they're very good. Thank you very much. Well, I thank appreciate you. That. Thank you.